live. We're live. We're live. We're rolling. Theo from Amateur Sports TV chatting with Bailey Bram. A lot of nicknames, Bailey. Which one's your favorite? You know what? There's a lot that I don't like, so we'll just say Bales or Brammer. Or probably Brammer and Bales were the two yeah, I thought were they're your favorites. And they're, they're easy. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we talked a little bit off air. August is camp month for yeah. you. <laughs> uh, camp and traveling. Right now you're in BC working on a camp. I am, yes. I'm in Victoria for today till Wednesday and then I fly to Kamloops and I fly home Saturday and then I start my camp on Monday. <laughs> exactly. So Monday through Wednesday? Yeah. Three full days. Yes. Play like a girl. Yes. There you go. How, how did we come up with that name of the camp? You know what? It uh I was working with, um, oh my gosh, Dave. Dave is his name and he is amazing. He's in charge of marketing. He did my logo, he did everything and he is incredible. And he came up with a few different things and I just said, look, like I don't think there's enough strong female role models um, that are doing this. You know, we have Sammy Joe in Manitoba and that is about it who runs a camp. And uh, you know, it, I wanted something that was just for females and that was, you know, where they can learn from females at the rink and they can have someone to look up to. They can see what I experienced and I can, you know, try to pass along some of the experiences that I've been through uh, to the next generation of girls coming up. And so there's so many camps offered to boys. There's, you know, there's mixed camps, which are great. Um, but I wanted something that would be different and something that, you know, could really um, just be directly for girls. So. So directed strictly for females. What is the age uh, group we're looking at to target for this camp and skill levels? Uh, yeah, all skill levels. So, and we have age groups eight to 15. And the way that I kind of run the camp is a little bit different. So we don't do many drills per se, where you're you know, competing against someone or you're um, paired up with someone of your skill level or whatnot. It's mostly individual focus just on skills. Um, so our focus is shooting, skating, um, stick handling, and it's all, every session is kind of broken up into those three um, sections, I guess you could say. And so I believe that if you're not a strong skater, it's going to be tough to kind of get you to the next level. Um, so we do do a lot of fundamentals with skating, and I know it can be tedious, but I find, you know, if you can't skate, you're not going to, you're not going to make it far. So um, our biggest our biggest focus is skating and then uh from there stick handling and shooting so just trying to really learn the fundamentals and you know we do everything kind of individualized and there's a lot of staff on the ice so that if someone is stronger in a certain area we have different things that we can push that certain player or if someone's a little bit weaker in that area we can spend a little bit more time with them helping them uh, develop their skills so excellent so you started playing when you were three i did i started skating when i was four uh, I started with figure skates. Did you start with figure skates as well, or did you oh, straight to hockey skates? I did not. I have four older brothers that all play, okay. and so I was wanted to be just like them. So I yep. have a mushroom cut, and I followed them around. <laughs> and yeah, figure skates are not in the cards for me. It was about edges. That's what I was told when I was four, so I stuck with it for two years. And once I stole the instructor's manual, no more figure skates. It was <laughs> on hockey, so didn't live that dream out too well myself. So... You talked about the instructors and having the uh, the participants in the camp. What is the uh, student to teacher ratio for uh, these participants, and who might be joining you on the ice uh, that we could mention for next week? Um, you know what? Last year, I know she's actually got invited to Hot Canada camp, so good good for her. Crappy for the camp, I guess. Um, Reagan Kirk was our goalie instructor last year, which is pretty cool to have um, another St. Anne girl. Yeah. Um, and then we've actually might have Bridget Lequet out and then my sister Shelby will be on the ice as well. Um, and then some other local female hockey players. So kind of neat. And some of the midget AAA girls that are coming up are now offering to give back. So kind of nice to have that female um, role model on the ice and not have to be kind of, I know some young girls get a little bit intimidated when there's guys on the ice. So. Right on. And this is your sister that you and I were potentially going to be playing together growing up. You've played a lot of years together growing up. Um, you know what? We were three years apart growing up, so we were never really on the same team um, until actually when I 
when we went to college. So it was my last year of university, her freshman year. She came and took my center spot, and I got pushed to the wing. <laughs> so I was at Mercyhurst, correct? At Mercyhurst, yes. So. How? Would, tell me real quick, what was it like? I mean, you're scouted by the national program. You wanted to pursue your endeavors education-wise. Uh, you got an offer to go play at Mercyhurst. How were you able to manage and, you know, keep everything in tune while you were at the prime of your career? You know what? I definitely have to thank our coaching staff, our guidance counselors. There was a lot of moving parts in my family. Um, they've always kind of preached, you know what, you're, you're always going to have your education. You're not always going to have your hockey. Um, so kind of that, they really, really always – instilled in me that school does come first and you have to have good grades in order to play um and then obviously our coaches kind of maintained that we had to have a certain level of grades in order to step on the ice so we, whether it was at Balmoral or Mercyhurst um it was the same standard and so I knew I had to work hard in school in order to be on the ice and so I always kind of tried to balance it the best I could some days were better than others um you know, you're going to university party scene comes in a little bit um, so you, you try not to get caught up in that. You try to, you know, live and have that college lifestyle a little bit. You want to be, you know, the top of your career. You want to, you're training hard, you're managing classes. You're now living on your own, having to cook for yourself. There's a lot of moving parts that came to play. And so, um, you know, we had the older girls on the team to help us out with certain areas. You had the coach to help us out. You had the guidance counselor to help you with your scheduling. You know, I'd call mom and dad when I needed money or <laughs> Two. You need that shoulder to cry on while you're on the phone, exactly. A lot of tears on the phone, I'm sure. So. Yeah. So, so next Monday, camp start. What is the schedule? It's a full day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for these participants? So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And so they'll be on ice, dry land, and classroom sessions. So obviously there's going to be some work, like, feeding off of each other, going to dry land, to the ice, to the classroom. It's going to be one complete uh, thought process there, I'm sure. Correct, Bailey? Yes, for sure. And, you know, I want to instill in them um, the importance of goal setting and the importance of dreaming big and, um, you know, the importance of nutrition and all, all these different things that come to play when, you know, you want to be an elite athlete and you want to make the next level. And those are things that I didn't really, you know, know about until later in my career. So, um, you know, the younger they can learn about this stuff, the more on top of it they'll be when it's, when it's their turn. So Absolutely. I was looking on the, the Facebook page where it has – the uh, the camp itself, and I saw some videos of some sprint techniques and my famous burpees. I am a huge fan of burpees. I love watching them more than doing them. <laughs> Don't we all? Uh, no doubt when you get older, they're a little bit uh, tense. But uh, outside of that, do you need to do anything uh, somewhat different in a dry land session that some of these uh, females might be looking forward to, or is it – just building that camaraderie and just getting the workouts in. Yeah, you know what? It was a lot of, like I said, I'm going to probably repeat this word a lot of, but fundamentals. Um, yeah. so just instead of, you know, killing them and doing hard dry land the whole time, it's more of learning. How do you do a proper sprint? How do you do a proper jump? How do you warm up properly for your ice session? How do you cool down after an ice session? Um, stuff that will help them along their career and, I find that that's all stuff like when I was young, I literally got to the rink in my gear. I got on the ice, I got off the ice. It was freezing cold sometimes. I had to warm up my feet. I'd get in the car, I'd go home, right? And I didn't know the importance of warming up. I didn't know the importance of cooling down. I didn't know how to do a proper sprint. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know any of this stuff. And so fortunately for me throughout my career, I've, you know, I've learned from the best track coaches. We've had nutritionists, for yeah. we've had, so many moving parts and I've learned so much and I was kind of always tried to be a little bit of a sponge when it came to learning all that stuff. And so now I just feel like I have so much that I want to help and give back to the others and the next generation. So sure for the females that are participating in the camp, what is, if there was a take home message you can give them after the last, after three days, what would it be that would, you know, say that the camp is not only successful, but it's, something that they can continue to work on for the rest of their season and their career. Yeah. And that's kind of what we, we preach. It's not so much, um, you know, we're going to do all the fundamentals shooting and stick handling and skating. And it, for me, it's more, I want them to be able to take this stuff home and be able to do it throughout the season. It's not so much come out, do a couple drills, get off. And now you're ready for season. I want it to be, you're actually learning stuff 
and it's you know it's clicking in their brain or okay now i can learn how to do this this is how it's properly done and now i can work on this throughout the season and keep getting better at it um and then at the end of the day i just want them to be able to realize that anybody can do it and you know i was a young kid with big dreams from a little town and you know if, if i can do it you know, anybody can do it and i find that without a role model in front of you that's showing you and you know having you believe that you can actually do it um a lot of people doubt it so um, i'm living proof of that and i just want them to know that you know anything they want to do in life they can do and whether it's hockey or whether it's anything else you know i just want them to know and leave there with the confidence in themselves that um regardless they can do whatever they want to do of course of course growing up like you said you had four older brothers yeah. were they your role models or were they the ones that kept you out of trouble and were you one that had a role model for the ice? Like, who did you look up to growing in St. Anne? I mean, I, I'm maybe 20 minutes away from where you grew up, you know, in small town East St. Paul, too. So, I mean, having role models growing up, who was that person for you that uh, kept thinking, I want to be just like this person? Yeah, there was there was a few. Obviously, I have four older brothers, so um, I wanted to be just like them. Everything they did, I wanted to do. My parents always taught me that it didn't matter if I was a girl or a boy. Um, I was, I could be just as good as anybody. So they never really made that gender stereotype. So for me, it was just, I was just on the ice playing hockey and it didn't matter if it was a girl or a boy. Um, so I think that was pretty important. And then I, so Jocelyn LaRock grew up in town with me. She used to play with my older brother, Tyler. Um, I was like her stick girl after games, I'd grab her sticks, I'd bring her water. I, you know, I looked up to her so much. She was the girl that was playing boys hockey that, yeah. you know, was out there doing it. And so for me, it was Jocelyn. Jocelyn was always there. And I felt like I kind of followed in her footsteps and she made the under 18 or the under 22 team. And I made the under 22 team. She was my first phone call. And then I got invited to my first, uh, national team camp. Jocelyn was my first phone call. And, you know, she's been there through every step of the way. And then obviously Jennifer Botterell was like my hero. She, I was 12 years old, but I think that was the first time I'd ever seen women talking on TV and it was 2000 yeah. Olympics. And I was like, well, this is insane. Like before that, I was going to be the first girl to play in the NHL. That was my dream. And uh, when I got to watch the Olympics on TV, everything kind of changed. And um, having Jennifer from Winnipeg and being that hometown hero was, was pretty yeah. special. And, so to be able to kind of come full circle and wear number 17 after her was one of the coolest things. So. How was it stepping on the ice for the first time <laughs> with a Canadian flag on your chest? Was it just like, please don't fall, please don't trip, just one lap, we're good to go kind of thing? Yeah, I think in warm up, I remember I was just like, saw my parents and they had, they were dressed in the nines and Canada gear. And for them, it was their dream too. And I had you know, I'd been on the under 18 team, I'd been on the under 22 team and I, got cut from the senior team, I think three years in a row. And so for them to be there and see me finally, you know, achieve my dream of playing on the national team was just as special for them. And I remember like, every game, I always kind of find the time to stretch and I always find my parents in the crowd and we always yep. make eye contact. And I remember they were just bawling and I made me cry and I'm like, holy moly, I got a game to play, pull it together. So good thing we had the 20 minute flood in between. But I mean, once the game started, it's just like any other game, right? So, but uh, I'll never forget it. It was truly one of the most special days of my life. So. Awesome. So the camp starts Monday. We have spots still available for camp? Yes, there is. I think three or four spots available. So. Okay, they do that through the Facebook page? Yes, or email baileybramfha uh, at gmail.com. Perfect. So Bailey Bram, Female Hockey Academy FHA at gmail.com. Yeah. Great. Uh, East End Arena is the location still? Yes. East End Full Arena. Days, uh, come prepared to work. Come prepared to have fun and take some skills home. Like I said, not just for the camp, but just the fact that you can get into it and prepare yourself for the rest of your season, right? Exactly. All right. I don't see a peanut butter and jam sandwich around. Uh <laughs> I was supposed to ask which jam is your favorite? Strawberry. Strawberry. <laughs> I took you for a Saskatoon blueberry person. Yeah, no. No. Okay. Uh, orange and marmalade that would just ruin my day. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, smooth or crunchy PB? You know what? I am a big fan of crunchy, but if it's PB and J, I do smooth. Okay. All right. Uh, last question I'm going to get you out of here, uh, hockey related. 
quickly your thoughts about the importance of female hockey at a professional level. Uh, you had a little bit of a stint in Buffalo. Uh, no, my sister. So sister, sorry. Um, have you been following what's been going on lately and recently in Eastern Canada and the Northwestern States? I mean, do you see it as being a positive that the league is still around, obviously? And would you like to get – how would you – what's your thoughts on that? You know what? I just feel like there's so much up in the air right now and there's so much – so many moving parts with, you know, none of the Canadians are in that league and 99% of the U.S. Olympians and national team athletes aren't playing. Um, the other league is running. Um, I don't want to say that it's not the best talent on the ice, but I mean, there's no national team players playing. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if that's going to help the game grow. Um, but it's, there's so many, so much up in the area now that I honestly, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the next step will be. So it's hard to kind of make an opinion on it when there's just so much unknown. So. That's perfectly fine. It's your camp. It's Monday. It's going to be fantastic to see you back home. You're representing the middle province right there, I see. So well sure. done. And uh, we look forward to hearing how the camp goes and obviously some picks and some insights uh, on social media as it goes on. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Bailey Bram, F-H-A at gmail.com. Check it out. Get an email to her if you'd like to get in. Uh, several spots still available and good luck to all the participants and thank you very much Bailey for joining us truly uh, a camp that is well noted and well needed uh, for not just role models in Manitoba but also for young female hockey players so thank you very much no thank you for having me right on we'll look forward to talking to you later this is Thea with Amateur Sports TV and we will talk to you later take care